Namaste. Good morning, everybody. Rev G here, uh, continuing in our Lenten journey. Uh, today, I'd like to read from Living Presence, The Sufi Path to Mindfulness and the Essential Self by Kabir Helminski. I've read, I've read from his work before, um, but this one, this one really hits home for me. <clears throat> it's, this is on page 71. The Tyranny of the False Self. If we look at the experience that we call being alive and honestly see contents of consciousness, we will see that we fail to bring our full attention to living because we're filled with desire and anger and loneliness and fear. Our conditioned self cannot stop comparing, wanting, defending, resenting, and being afraid. If we could bring our full attention and presence to each moment of life, that false conditioned self would run out of energy. This state of compulsive living, I love that, compulsive living, sometimes we, I feel that way, is so painful and its loneliness is so great that we do everything we can to escape it through dreams of it being otherwise, through entertainment, through self-gratification, through seeking in spiritual circles the love that we do not feel for ourselves. If we could just be, we would be able to escape the anxiety of becoming something that we are not. Getting something we don't have and trying to shape reality according to our own desires. Too often, we don't want to change, but we just want the pain to go away and we want to stay the same with all our desires and our image of ourselves intact but we will not be successful running toward anything because we cannot run away from ourselves. And yet what we most need is what we already are, our essential self. There is no escape. There is only coming home. And so then, I mean, this is like all of the teachings um, we talk about from an inter interfaith perspective. This is like all the teachings, the Buddha, taught us about you know the four noble truths with the first one being that life is suffering why because we're attached we're attached to everything that isn't real the sufis teach us that the only thing that's real is this connection between the lover and the beloved and on and on and on the um, you know the examples go i think the hard part is what we talked about yesterday which is this theoretically sounds great on its face. And you say, yeah, boy, that's so true. Yes, 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 I resonate. You know, I mean, I have underlying circle, stars in the margin because I, I relate, I identify. I say, yes, that's me, that's me. You're reading my mail <laughs> kind of thing, you know? But the question really is about the application then. So then so then now what? Next step. What's the next step? How do we do that? How do we just be instead of get caught up in the do? <sighs> Again, I go to divine grace has to be the answer because I don't think that this is an answer that we intellectually resolve um, and figure out. I think it's a spiritual resolution and that spiritual resolution depends upon the power that we receive from the divine it reminds me and i'm going to close with this of like superman so you know superman has to put the cape on and and all this other stuff he's got superpowers but he's got to go through a couple of motions first before he could actually fly he has the superpower Sometimes that kryptonite can get the better of you. I believe that the kryptonite is the ego for us. And while the ego helps maintain us, um, the ego isn't all there that, that there is. We have to surrender the ego. And in surrendering the ego, we're able to recognize that that superpower that we have only comes from a higher power. It doesn't come from ourselves. You know, Superman is very different than Batman. You know, Batman is just a man and he doesn't have superpowers. If you know anything about, you know, <laughs> superheroes and, you know, 
the 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 epidemiology of superheroes but superman does have superpowers we have superpowers but not because of our human nature only because of our divine nature do we have those superpowers and it requires that we go into the telephone booth and change our attire and put on a cape and that cape is divine grace i believe so leave you with that and we pray thank you god creator great spirit you who are as expansive as the cosmos and yet as personal as our heartbeat help us to remember that the superpower that we have is from you but we have to take certain steps and help us to take those steps help us to remember to engage the superpower that we have only based on you and your love and your grace and your mercy for us help us to remember that as we go through the day and apply it <laughs> there's the trick namaste